Hey, Pat. What's going on? Sharp pokey objects. Sharp pokey objects. Yeah. Today we're talking about everyday carry pocket knives. And by I mean pocket knives, uh, pocket knives are tools. Knives that go in your pocket. Yeah, exactly. They're tools. The fighting knives are more fixed blades, right? I agree. So um, what we're going to do is break down some of our EDC knives that we, we carry yeah. on us. Yeah. What, what's your thought process when you're, uh, when you're looking for a, a knife you're going to carry every day? Um, well, number one. Yeah, number one criteria. It's probably blade style because I'm not a huge fan of serrated blades and stuff like that. Um, the other is how it feels in the hand. Um, I don't know. How about you? What's the number one criteria for me is... When I lose it, am I going to be sad? Yeah. Because I've lost every, every everyday carry knife I've ever owned. I've lost it somewhere. That's the thing. Or, you know, they're gone. <laughs> I'm not buying high-end knives because I'm probably going to lose it eventually. Right. Yeah, exactly. Now I have, when I, when I dress up, I have dress-up knives that might cost $300, you know, folding knife. You know what I mean? Because it's like a nice watch when you go out. I guess. Nice. I, I guess I don't have it. Yeah. But when I'm working, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to show you the first knife that I am carrying. Look, I'm taking it off of my body now. Oh, look at this baby. It's a Gerber. Look at this stupid clip. It's bent the fuck out. I've lost this knife twice and found it both times. You know what it says on it? Thank you, John Wonker. It says Central Mechanical. <laughs> because he gave me this knife yeah. that he made up for all his employees, I'm pretty sure, and they all got one. It's a free knife if I lose this one. Although, I'm a little sad. This has been a really nice knife. I don't know what you think about it, but it's a really like nice it. little using knife. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, cutting twine, cutting boxes, you know, uh, sticking a bloated uh, cow, you know. If I'd have known that, I wouldn't have grabbed that. <laughs> you know, put peanut butter and jelly on your sandwich, or if you need to cut cake, who said that? It's just... Chesty Puller. Chesty Puller? Puller. Puller. Yeah, you know, the Marine. No. Yeah. And you should have a sharp knife in case you need to cut cake. No. I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, you know, it's been a good knife. Hey, uh, but, you know, do I, do I shop to pick out exact, you know, things? Here's my other knife. And I don't carry ice switchies back and forth, to tell you the truth. Um, pretty, this is a little heavier. Uh, you know, nice. and, and weight makes a difference carrying it every day. But it, I like the way it comes out. Oh, what's that say on it, Pat? Does it say Central Mechanical? <laughs> John Locker, thank you again. Now there, and, 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 you know, I took this out and showed it to somebody one time. And I'm like, yeah, look, this knife John gave me. And he goes, wow. I don't know if you can read that. He had it engraved with your name. And I'm like, uh... Well, no, it's a buck knife. <laughs> yeah. he, he didn't have an engraved with my name, by the way. It's a buck knife, but you know. Yeah, I mean, and that's an, another nice knife to use. Uh, it's got a little sticky stuff on it. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Here, touch, touch it just in No, cases. no, you know, that's probably know. sticky something bloated. <laughs> it could be another bloated cow or something, you know. Um, but, you know, both these knives are pretty, pretty, uh, you know, they're not really too much of a drop point. A little bit, pretty straight. Got a little belly to them. I like a little belly on a knife, but I don't choose it for that. Yeah. Let's look at some of yours. Um, this is a Buck Vanguard. Oh, it's engraved on my name. Must yeah, be this my one, knife. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I really like this. I carried uh, one, I lost <laughs> the one that I had for a while, so this one doesn't open up as nice. But I carried this one, uh, this type, for several years, and I liked how lightweight it was. Um, so I will show one thing about this knife versus this knife. Um, the way it locks is the lock is in the rear. There's a notch in there, and this is the bar that locks it. This knife here, the way it locks is underneath the bar comes across, and you got to push it this way. Okay, well, one thing, if you do this violently, you can cut yourself, but... I find this to be a more secure blade locking mechanism than this. Oh uh, yeah. Like every time I've had a knife, I'm doing something hard and it comes loose, it's been this style of lock and not this style lock. You know, and then it comes down and cuts your finger, you know? Yeah. But, you, you know, again, we're talking about 
what thirty dollar knives here. Yeah. So you know what what would be the possible lock on? But that is something that I do consider is when when these knives first came out, folding knives. This was pretty much the only locking system that they came out in. Yeah. You know, and so it was what it was. But this, I find this to be more secure under heavy use. And you know, it's just uh, neither here nor there. But it but it is a point. Um, is is how does it lock? I, I know that you know people sit there and say uh, steel type and everything else like that. Like how well does it hold an edge and everything yeah. like that? For me, uh, the knife that I carry right now is a um, Boker AK74, and I, I love this knife. I've carried this for a lot of years. Uh, it's pretty well used. Oh, it, it is. I and something else on on picking knives is on the clip style, how you're pulling it out of your pocket. Because one of them, you know, they pull out two completely separate right. ways. Um, I know that this is not, these blades are not as hard as other blades, but it also makes them easier for sharpening. Um, the first day I got this, my wife got it for me for Christmas. She's like, don't cut yourself. I was like, okay. And then I, you cut yourself. No, oh. I did not cut myself. What happened is Christmas evening, I was down in the basement. I go to open up a package, it slips and I stab myself in the leg. So he and didn't cut himself. No, I did not. And so I told my stepson, I said, hey, can you run upstairs, tell your mom I need her. And she's yelling upstairs, you better not have cut yourself. And I was like, I didn't. I didn't. She got downstairs, I was like, I stabbed myself. Stabbed myself, it's not a cut. Uh, it shot show, I stopped and told Boker that story and they seemed completely unimpressed. So I don't know how many stories they've had similar to that. Uh, whenever we talk about traveling with knives, I've got a really cheap $15 uh, Smith & Wesson because you've got a story where you had a very high-end blade taken oh, off yes. of you. And so if I forget this in a pack and uh, my carry-on and they're like, hey, what is this? It's like, throw it away. I'm perfectly okay with <laughs> them throwing away a $15 yeah. knife. I threw away a 200 and some dollar fixed blade knife one morning, really early morning at the airport. So... Yeah. But at least I threw it away before I went through security. It worked way better than the loaded magazine I tried to take through security in one of my packs that got in there. That didn't work well, out so good. And I don't know if you've been <laughs> keeping up what's happening in Turks and Caicos, but they're putting people in prison for 12 years for four bullets. Really? Oh, man. Yeah. 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 yeah you got to be careful I don't think traveling. I'm going to Turks and Caicos anytime soon. <laughs> uh, here's another knife that I picked up on, on a travel, and I've been wanting one of these type of blades. It's a Gerber as well with the same locking style mechanism that you like and i know that these tips can be pretty brittle but i've, I've been wanting one of these kind of razor style looking yeah. knives and it's so pretty lightweight there and there is a slight difference like like you said this is a razor style knife i i I'm got really into knives for a while and dreamed about knife fighting and you know all kinds of cool shit so someday we're gonna do fixed blade knives and then oh, we're yeah. just gonna and people are going to be, why the hell do you have that many dollars in knives that you never use? Like, you never... Yeah. Oh, sometimes I pull it out and fantasize about gutting some motherfucker with it. I mean, some... You ever thought about taking one of those and poking bloated cows <laughs> yeah, instead? Well, they're too big to... Like, the cow has to heal up after you pop the blood. Oh, I... You know what I mean? Because okay. you're putting it through their stomach and their hide. Okay. I, you know, to let the gas off. So, yeah. But anyway. So, my point was... Hey, there's a little bit of a difference between this style tip and a tanto tip. Tanto, yeah. Tanto, tanto, potato, potato, okay, whatever. Those tips are brutally strong. Yeah. They're also very difficult to sharpen. Yeah. That transition from there to there is a bear. But, yeah, you're right. This tip may be just hair brutal, but don't confuse it with the, the tanto tip. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, so you're a Lone Ranger guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm the Japanese Tanto tip. I I tell you what I I, I love those uh, the the those uh, style knives the tips on those and you can get the the AK74 model in several different uh, style blades uh -huh. on it. But um, and we're we're not even like whenever we talk about high end knives and losing them, I lose a Microtech and. I, I, I'm gonna. I'm pissed. I've lost a knife. Uh, bench made. I used to have this bench made knife I love. There's a bench made tree somewhere in Potomac County. I don't know where, but I'm not getting the picking knives off of it. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah but you're, you're not sharpening pencils with, no. with a uh, no. microtech or something like that. So these are working blades, tools that we yeah. carry every, every yeah. day. Just, you know, cheaper knives. He, he started to talk about steel. Hey, you know, if, if, I'm, buying, if I'm buying a high-end knife, I don't want very much, uh, I don't want very much stainless in it. Yeah. It just isn't hard enough, doesn't hold an edge as well. Um, if you're a long ways from anywhere, you want that edge to stay sharp as long as you can, which means it's not a shaving edge to start with. It's a working edge. You know what I mean? It's sharp, but it's not, you're not shaving with it, you know, because that, that finds out the edge and makes it chip really easy under work. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I want carbon steels, you know, and, and, you know, I want these towards the carbons. I like CM 154. Maybe it's the best of both worlds. Maybe it's not. There's probably better steel out, but it's a good steel in between. But I don't want just plain stainless. Um, when you talk about sharpening, I, I use uh, diamond hones and I still do it by hand. Um, I don't know. Sometimes it's just nice to get everything out of your head and just feel that knife drag across, you know, a, a nice diamond home. But I, I use big ones. Mine, mine are this long. They're, they're probably a foot long and two and a half inches wide. You know, they're not, they're not cheap. Do, do you feel like a samurai whenever you're doing that? I do feel a little like a samurai. Yeah. yeah. In fact, from 47 Ronin. In fact, if we could just bring this up here and that top bun note. that baby up. Yeah. I could samurai the hell out of that. I could, you know, but yeah, hey, sharpening is important, you know, and if you don't know how to sharpen a knife, take it to somebody. Don't ruin the damn knife on a grinder or, a, you know, I just see so many, like, at gun shows. Hey, that, that's a Randall. I wonder why it's so cheap. Well, it's because somebody freaking ground on it with a grinder. You know what I mean? That's why it's so cheap. But, um, yeah, carry knives, you know, what are you going to use them for, you know? And... You know, I, I'll be honest with you. One of the best carry using knives, um, in my opinion, is the Milwaukee. Um, and, and it uses the box cutter. You just oh. replace the box cutter edge. The, nice knife, but the, it's heavy and big. The only thing that I found in Milwaukee I do not like is they make a bullnose uh, razor blade. Everything else, Milwaukee can make underwear, and I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm buying it. Well, Stacy wears Milwaukee hoodies. I've got a Milwaukee jacket, and that thing, you plug a battery into it. Yeah, Milwaukee. I, I think she got some Milwaukee product. pants last time the guy came. Oh, nice. Yeah, she, she's, she's got an in with Milwaukee dealer. So, hey, Waters True Value in, in Wamego, Kansas, or Waters Hardware, whatever yeah. it's called. You know, go see Stacy. She'll hook you up with, here's the problem. Whatever you want Milwaukee-wise, she's going to upsell you to the next to the next tool up. Like, she's... She's going to upsell you. You're going to pay more than you went in to do. You're going to go in for a knife and come out with a weed whacker? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yep, that's how it's going to be. But, you know, big shout out to Waters out there. You know, they got they got some decent looking girls working there. And uh, Hey, see, see Dale. Dale, you know, and I'm not saying Dale's a good looking girl because, you know, Dale's kind of an old guy. But go see Dale. He, he knows what he's doing when it comes to building stuff and things like that, you know? Yeah. yeah. You got any shout outs on knives? Uh, no. No, not really. For me, um, I I still like to stay Buck Gerber. Um, Buck Gerber Boker. Um. Yeah, for me, me it's and and I and I actually prefer uh, Gerber to Buck, but Buck has changed a lot over the years. But Buck used to have a, they had a um, edge, and the way they made their edge so strong was it almost had a piece of wire. Like it didn't taper to the edge, it tapered down, then it went out, and then you had the edge, which made the edge super strong for using. But when you were sharpening it, it was almost impossible, hand sharpening is almost impossible because you kept riding on that little bubble, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you couldn't get down to, so I, you know, and we're talking 30 years ago, you know, yeah. it was frustrating, you know, trying to sharpen a buck knife. So that's bucks, but I've enjoyed this one. Uh, I've, I've always loved my Gerber knives. Um, I even have an old Gerber, what was that? A Mark. Gator. What? No, the oh. Mark, the Vietnam era freaking double edged dagger. Mark. Oh, I don't know, but I, I've got an old Gerber two. Gator back whenever they were still making them in the US. Oh, yeah. uh, it's still one of my favorite knives. Cold Steel's a good knife. Uh, Cold Steel makes yeah. awesome knives. But, yeah. 
back in the day, I was mine cold steel. I don't remember what they're called. They had a longer one, a shorter one. I always bought the shorter well, one. Now we're starting to talk about fixed blades, though. No, no. These were the... Oh, this the was, pocket knives? Yeah, uh -huh. and they were 30 bucks, 32 bucks. I think they're $100 now, yeah. you know? So, yeah, I've kind of backed off, but that's good good steel, you know, good good blades. Um, hey, we don't... We're, we're not out here selling knives or selling no. blades, and if we've left out anybody, we, you know... It's just stuff that we do and, and things we think about. It's just, uh, it always, I always think it's, I think it's funny at SHOT Show looking at people and seeing what they're carrying and all this stuff. And I'm just thinking, yeah, you wouldn't open a, a soup can with that knife. No. Like you would cry if you had to stick it through a piece of steel. And, well, it's and, like you said, they're, they're dressing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a dress knife. And I dress up sometimes. I have dress knives, you know? They're, they're in, just like I have dress watches, you know? Yeah. You know I, a couple of my dress watches don't work. They're yeah. antique dive watches. Yeah. They don't run anymore. But they look good on my wrist. <laughs> People don't. What time is it? I pull out my phone to see what time it is. Because my watch doesn't work, but it looks good, baby. Yeah. 1960s dive watch are you kidding like you know i probably could have been diving in the 60s all right so that wraps it up all right so knives plan to lose the damn thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> buy to lose your knife that's that's i guess do we have any like anything else here like i think that's our main point yeah yeah and oh and day one Cut yourself with your knife, and then it's yours. Yep, get it over with. Yeah, get it over with, and it's yours. Yep. Out!